Okay, today we're gonna have a little video series about a new pattern that I'm making. These are gonna be two part ornaments and they're consisting of a base with the name scrolled out and then an overlay of each of the reindeer. And I just came up with this idea a couple days ago and while I started to cut them out I was thinking about all the questions that people ask me and I thought well it's been a while since I did a video so I'm a little rusty on that and I hope you put up with it but I'm gonna try to show how I put these ornaments together and cut them and hopefully you'll be able to pick up some tips that will help you do them successfully or apply them to your other scroll sign. Now I'm gonna stack cut these this is the second set this is made out of eighth inch plywood and they were cut together which made it faster of course because you get twice twice as much done in the same amount of time and there are a couple little techniques for that that will make it successful but it also it's easier to cut because you have a little more resistance on small pieces like this and um, it's just a fun way to, to do several so you can give them away. Now the first set is cut with maple and walnut and the secondary set I cut with the plywood and I'm going to be staining these pieces so they'll have a whole different look when we're done. And I'm going to do, I don't know how many clips yet, but I'm going to do short clips with the videos and kind of introduce you to all the steps in doing them. Okay, so let's get started. I pre-cut my wood just about to size for one project. Of course you could lay it out how you want where it's going to be most efficient. And I decided for the reindeer pieces I want the wood going in a vertical direction. I just think it'll give a nice look and it'll keep the tips of the antlers a little bit stronger. And for the background piece I went in a horizontal direction because it's supposed to be like the sky and maybe that's clouds it'll be or it'll look like wispy clouds and plus it'll be stronger for the letters going that way. So I cut my two pieces of, of wood maple and walnut and I cut corresponding pieces of eighth inch plywood. We'll set the plywood pieces aside for now. And because these are hardwoods I don't want them to burn so I'm going to use some blue painters tape and I'm going to just put them over the entire surface. This will help prevent burning on the wood. It really does work because we're going to be cutting these very slow because they're detailed and I don't really want little burn marks and a lot of people say it helps the blades last longer too. So what we're going to do is just put a, a layer over each piece and like this you could overlap it and wrap it around that's all in the waist area anyway. Now I'm going to use Elmer's spray glue and hope that it works. I've been having problems with it coming out in streams lately and I used an old box and I lined it with a piece of paper. That way if the paper gets too much glue on it after using it a lot I just peel off the paper or throw another layer on it and it looks like it's going to work like it should. It should be a light mist like that and you leave it a little bit until it gets like masking tape, sticky. It doesn't matter as much on the tape either. You can put more and I would err towards putting more rather than too little because the last thing you want is the pattern to be flapping up when you're trying to cut all these little letters. Stick it on. This one's still tacky. Make sure your wood's in the right direction. I've done that before. And stick on your reindeer piece. 
and you're either good to go now or we can put another piece of wood underneath. Now there are a lot of ways that you can stick the second piece on the back. You could either wrap it in clear postal tape or some people use nails to stack them together but I found my favorite method is using the good old hot glue gun. Um, I found that using the heavy duty glue it's never let go on me. It's quick, it's easy, it holds well. The only thing you have to be careful of is not to get on the design in a delicate area. Like I wouldn't want to have glue back here because trying to pry it apart could be a problem. Although if you do get it stuck on your design, you'll know when the, when the design pops out, um, you could take it to the microwave oven and put it in for 10 seconds and it rewarms the glue enough to gently pry it apart, but you risk breaking it a little bit. So what I do is just dot on the corner. I don't know if you could see that, just little tiny bits. You don't need a lot and press it together. You could do as many layers as you want. You could do four layers. This thickness I would do would be comfortable and just a little bit and it's fast. It's clean. You don't have to worry about it coming apart. And like I said, it just it makes your time of scrolling much more efficient. So there we are, ready to go to the drill press. Alrighty, we're ready to drill our piece. And since there's a lot of delicate drilling here, little holes, I like to make a real quick zero clearance table for the drill press. I cut a piece of plywood about the size of the table and I take my trusty blue packaging tape or blue painter's tape and just tape up the piece in place for now. And I'm good for a couple projects. And we're good to go. Now I need a little tiny piece. I gotta lower my table. Make sure you're still over the hole. That's one thing. Um, and I'm gonna drill the lettering first. It's the smallest. And I'm gonna try to drill the areas that have the most surface to them, like that part in the R and there in the U. I'll show you. You don't want to miss. We're looking for the thickest point. So that's done. Now this piece has three different drill bit sizes because there's smaller stars and there's larger stars and both those are too big for the letters so there's this is a 32nd inch bit and then there's a 16th and an 8th inch. So I think you all know how to drill so you could go ahead and finish drilling. Our pieces are all drilled out and we're getting closer to the scroll saw but we still have another step to do. As you can see the back even with our little 
zero clearance table has a lot of bumps on it from drilling. Now when you're doing detailed work like that it could really make a mess of it because your piece is going to rot. So you need to take some sandpaper and go along with the grain and sand the back to knock down those edges so you have a smooth surface on the back. That way it'll sit flat on your table. Even our reindeer has only two holes, but it's a good habit to get into is to just keep a little piece of paper. This is 120 grit, so it'll knock it down without taking too much off and sand the backs flat. But don't forget that step. It's important. The next thing we have to think about are our blades. Now for this project we're going to use two odd blades which are quite small. The teeth are very tiny and they're going to do the main cutting and I am going to use the Mach size 3 blades to cut around the ovals of the back plate because they're a little bit thicker they're a little more stable and it's easier to cut a straighter line even though it's an oval it's easier to go on a straight edge it won't follow the grain as much but for the majority of the design we're going to need these little tiny two out blades and I like using reverse tooth blades the bottom teeth point up because it leaves the piece cleaner on the back but before we use blades I always clean them I keep a little jar of paint thinner with a sponge in it and as I open a new dozen because I'm lazy I don't do it every time I do 12 at once I dip the ends in the paint thinner try not to spill that and then I take a paper towel and I wipe them off and this is because a lot of blades are sent packaged with an oily like residue on them so they don't rust while they're being shipped or stored or whatever and a lot of times especially with these tiny blades they um it causes them to slip out of the blade holders and as a last thing to get all the paint thinner off I go a step further and spray a little bit of window cleaner to kind of cut the grease and make sure that they're really clean and dry and once I have the dozen done, I wrap them up, and then I know that they're clean, that I don't have to do them every single time. So I'll take my one blade and pull that out, make sure the ends are really clean, and we're ready to go to the saw.